Hello, hello. Let's make sure that that uh, whiteboard can be seen. A little bit, uh, okay. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so today, uh, what we're going to do, what I'm gonna teach you, we're gonna go through the six sabotaging um, identities, the six sabotaging identities or beliefs that we create through the process of individuation. Uh, then we're gonna go into how to make or how we make ineffective choices, ineffective choices. And, and then from that, we create what, what we consider or call a, a negative vision. Um, and then what we're going to do is a process of unpacking uh, a particular end result that you want, and we're going to then do a recode. So it's a big session. It's a really big session, and, um, you know, that's going to be amazing. So uh, switch uh, everything else off, any distractions off, and get yourself comfortable. Um, we're going to rip into this, and it's going to be amazing, and you're going to get some clarity you're gonna get some real clarity around the unconscious and why we do and behave in particular ways and how we actually get stopped by our unconscious patterning and beliefs and how we actually make a lot of decisions unconsciously that, that we, we make to try and resolve a way that we actually feel incomplete about ourselves. Um, so it's a really cool session. It's a big one and um, we'll get started. So first of all, I wanted to go into our six sabotaging identities and I'm just gonna bring it up on the share screen so you can, you can have a look. So you'll see up the top here, really they, these are the six sabotaging identities that we have and they are i'm not good enough i'm not worthy i'm not capable i'm insignificant and i'm not perfect and i do not belong there they all are now in my experience you know we usually have two of these that are more predominant or stronger than than others um and most of us will have but potentially a little bit of all of the other ones going on that are running us unconsciously. And so what that means is, is that we do things in order, we do things in order to prove or show that these are not true about our true selves, all right? And in doing so, it actually keeps us stuck or it keeps us from actually achieving what we really, really want in life. Um, and so we're gonna go through each of them. We're gonna go through each of them one by one. So you can understand what these particular identities or beliefs, um, what they're about and, and how they show up um, in people's lives, including mine, including mine. Okay, so we'll just, we're gonna go through these one by one. So the, the, the first one, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough and I'll write, write them up here on the board. <clears throat> so the first one, Let's see, I want to make sure that you can see that screen properly. Yeah, perfect. So the first one we have is, so the six sabotage patterns, you could call them beliefs. Number one, number one is I am not good enough. So not good enough. 
Now, the, the not good enough, just let me know if you can hear me. So the first one is the, the not good enough. Now, the person who has this is predominantly in their personality or in their unconscious belief system is, you know, I'm not inherently good enough. So this person's like, well, if I do good things, you know, I'll, I'll get rewarded. And it shows up as someone who focuses on the work they have done. They focus on doing all this work to, to show that they're actually good enough. You know, look what I've done. You know, look what I've done to show that I'm actually good enough. And if they actually get what they want, it would prove they were actually good enough and the identity or belief would die. And hence, you never actually get there. Does that make sense? If you actually prove that you are good enough, that belief in you would then have to die. Yeah, the I am not good enough would have to die. And so you actually never, ever get there because the identity doesn't want to die. Okay, does that make sense? Now, the second one is the I am not worthy. So not worthy. Just let me know if you can see that. So not worthy is the next one. So the I'm not worthy person is that they're not allowed to have what they want. So they go and do things to become worthy, right? Do you see that? They do things, do things so they become worthy. So then they get what they want, but they don't go for what they want. You know, so they're always chasing, becoming worthy their whole life to get what they actually want. And the same as before, because if they if they did become worthy, that part of their identity would have to die. So they're always chasing. They're always not going for what they want. They're, they're chasing becoming worthy, right? They're chasing becoming worthy. Now, the third one is I don't belong. So don't belong. Don't belong. Now, the, the person who doesn't belong, right, they seek belonging their whole life instead of going for what they want. They have an absolute fear of being rejected. So they're always doing something to belong. Yeah, there's a complete fear about being rejected. And so we'll, we'll seek to do things that, that have them belong all the time. Yeah. I feel like I belong. So, you know, they, this person joins groups and, you know, they're, they're always um, wanting to, to feel like they're part of something instead of actually just going for what they want. Because there's an absolute fear of being rejected. They actually put themselves in, in, in places or situations um, where they can they can belong and they don't feel rejected. So they're always doing something to belong. Now, the fourth one is I am not perfect, which is one of mine, by the way. So number four is not perfect. You know, if you think about a child in a child's perspective, you know, doing things to show that that um, you're perfect, right? Doing things to show that you're perfect. What's going on there? Um, is, is, is inherently, you know, if I do this, you know, if I do this perfectly, I'll get praise from mum. If I do this perfectly, you know, people are going to like me more. If I do this perfectly, if I have the perfect body, yeah? So someone who decides there is a perfect way yeah, to be perfect and completely controlled and control situations. If I could just be more disciplined, yeah? If I work harder, if I look my best, but it's just not authentic and it's not them. Do you see that? It's, it's just, it's not authentic. 
So, you know, they, they actually, you never get there when you're trying to be perfect because you can't do anything more to be more perfect. Does that make sense? Right, so you don't actually go, go for what you want. You actually go for trying to be perfect and perfect things. Now, the fifth one is the core belief. So I'm not capable. Number five is not capable. Now, I'm also one of these as well. I've got this in, you know, in my running my unconscious, you know. So this, this person goes and, 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 and has to go and learn more or do more courses, you know, to, to, get, to, to get to or to allow them to have, you know, what they want. You know, this person says that I don't have enough time, you know, I need more degrees, I need more money, I need to have enough resources and time and knowledge. And, and then I'll be capable and, and then I'll be able to, you know, to, to have what I want. And, you know, again, if, you, if this person actually um, becomes capable and the belief then dies, um, you know, it, it, it then, then for this person, then they would be capable. And so they never actually get to be capable because that part of their identity would have to die. Now, the last one is being insignificant. So I'm insignificant. You know, I don't count. Now, the insignificant person's always trying to, you know, be visible, to be seen. You know, they, this person always feels like they're overlooked and they believe if they, they get seen then, and then they'll be significant and visible, then they'll be able to get what they want. So they get, go to be, to, to be seen or known and then suddenly, you know, they'll, they'll get handed what they want. And so the thing with these six sabotaging patterns is that there's nothing wrong with them. Okay, because they, they were, these were things that were created, these beliefs, patterns were created from a child's perspective so that we could orientate to the world and we could get what we wanted from the world. But as an adult, they, we simply don't need, need to have them anymore because they, they literally then become the thing that is in the way, you know. So they, these beliefs are, are simply just not needed anymore because really what happens is if you're continually just trying to resolve the belief in order to get what we want, this part of us, this part of us that's been part of our identity and our unconscious for so long would have to die. And it's not going to die. So you'd actually never, ever get what you want, right? Does that make sense? You just never get what you want. And we're going to move on and we, we're going to look at really uh, what true choices are and, and we're going to discover how we make ineffectual choices that which create a negative vision because, you know, we were trying to resolve one of those negative beliefs or six sabotaging patterns Right? which we're trying to resolve one of those. And so a lot of people make choices that it's all unconscious that are designed to resolve these. And so you can see if you're trying to do that, you never actually get the true result. You never actually get to have what it is that you would really, really like. And the fact is, is that, you know, nine out of 10 people that I work with really do not know the difference between what they think would make them happy and what would actually make them happy. So I'll say it again, most people don't know the difference between what they think will make them happy and what will actually make them happy. You see, a true end result is something you desire to create for no other reason than you would love to see it created. So not to be perfect, not to be capable, not to feel significant or good enough. You simply desire to create it because you would love to see it created. And this relies on completely knowing 
knowing that you already have everything. Now, this is one of the hardest things that for me to, to really, really understand is that I actually have it all right now. In fact, there's nothing I can do to be more worthy or more good enough. There's nothing I can be to be more significant or more loved or belong more, you know, or be more perfect. Or we already are that. We already are the super conscious. We actually have everything that we want. And we just create, choose to create what we would love, you know, or more of what we already have. So there's really, there's seven focus points that keep you from a true choice and, and where you create what we call a negative vision. See, in helping hundreds of, of people create true choices and end results, I know there are predictable ways that we're that we are actually creating negative visions instead of true end results that we love. And I'll explain them in depth so that you know what to look out for. These seven focus points are the motivators behind the goals and they knock you out of a true choice. So the first one, right, is first one is that, and I'll write it up on the board. Where's my purple? So the, the, the first one is where we're trying to resolve a negative belief. So trying to resolve a negative belief. So this is ineffective choices, which create a negative vision. So when we're trying to solve a negative belief, so that's trying to resolve one of these. So the I'm not worthy. Right, so I'll make my goals about others, the world and society. Once I've been good enough, I'll be worthy and then I can have what I want. So I'm not good enough. Is So I'll set out to achieve lots to prove to others that I am good enough. And this is one of mine as well. I'm significant, so all my goals will be about creating significance or I won't have any goals because if I went for them and did get them, you know, it, it, it would prove that to be right. You see that it would prove it to be right. So I don't belong. I'll set goals to fit in, be attractive enough to be loved or create something to belong to. I'll avoid rejection at all costs and reject others first. So I'm never the one rejected. Yeah, I don't have the capability. So all goals will be creating, you know, enough, enough resources to finally be able to do what I want in my life. And my life will be about having enough knowledge, money, relationships, time, or other resources to finally live my life. However, I'll lose my truth in, in the search for these resources. And I'm not perfect, you know, and I need to be perfect. I need to control myself and how the world and others see me. Yeah, I must be perfect because only perfect people succeed. And all my goals will be about how I need to be, act, feel and think. So we, we train young conscious as babies and children and it will keep playing that on repeat and automate the process. So... You know, it will do whatever we program, whatever program we give it, right? And when we do a recode, you know, the recode reorganizes this program. It keeps the wisdom and allows the resistance to be moved. So you go after what you want. So whatever we grew up with, we unconsciously go find it as adults. When we choose what we really love, the unconscious will reveal itself in the form of resistance, yeah? 
And these are the reasons why we can't have that because it literally experiences it right now. After it shows itself, we can then just smooth over, right? Those go for, go for holes with that recode process. Now, the second, the second way that, that you know, we, we make ineffective choices, right? Instead of, instead of true choices and create negative visions is, is by reaction, right? So the second way we make ineffective choices is by reaction. So your goal is actually a desire to get away from an unwanted circumstance or a condition. So it goes like, well, I'm going to do that because of this. Yeah. So I don't like my boss. So I'm going to go and get a job. I don't really care what it is. Yeah. All right. Or I'm going to, I don't like my job. So I'm going to create my own business or I'm, I'm overweight. So I'm going to go lose weight instead of actually create a health, a whole health and vitality. And you see the difference. So if, if you're carrying, carrying a bit of excess, like I am at the moment, instead of focusing on that problem and being in a problem solving structure and going, well, I've, I'm reacting to the weight that I've got and the shirts don't fit and whatever, and so I'm wanting to lose weight. This is a negative vision because what I really want is actually health and, and vitality. And in getting that true choice, yeah, I will actually lose the weight. And so here's an example. I got fired, so I'll start my own business. So if I feel overweight, I'm going to go to the gym. The problem with this is that all the motivation is stored in the, neg the negative situation and a small amount of success will kill the momentum. Another example is, is as soon as you no longer feel overweight, the motivation to go to the gym is gone. Or you realize you don't want all the stress of a business and you go back to a regular office job. In either case, you didn't really want the end result. So you were not ready to do what it takes to make it happen. So you can have future reactions too. This is when we look at all the things we do not want and then make a decision based on that. Yeah. So I don't want this to happen. So this means I will go for that. So some people say it this way. I don't know what I want, but I know what I don't want. And so they focus yeah, on what, is, what it is that they don't want. This creates a complete focus on what is unwanted, which gives away power. Just because you don't want a crappy boss doesn't mean you, you, you want to own a business, right? Just because you don't want to be unhealthy doesn't mean you love going to the gym every day. Reacting to negative gives all the power away to the negative instead of having the power in creation. So the third way we make ineffective choices is by limitation. Right, and this is only doing what we feel is capable or what we're comfortable doing. So choice by limitation. So your goal is actually focused on what you think is possible and not on what you'd really love. Right, you've basically edited down your dream and it sounds like I really want blah, blah, but I'm going to aim for blah, blah, because, you know, it, it's enough. The person usually has reduced their needs to basically nothing as they want to avoid disappointment at all costs. Therefore, they just set a low bar to go for. And the, the, they, they're doing only for what they really, and not doing for what they really love. An example would be, I'd love to be super abundant and rich. However, I'm only going to go after 100k income and I'd be happy with that. You see how that's just a massive limitation. And this actually removes the emotion of the end result, right? In this case, being super abundant and rich, and it reduces the inspiration massively. You see? 
So in fact, you were telling your super conscious, right, that you don't really believe in yourself or that it's bad to have what you really want. That's the, it's the unspoken, yeah, or the, or the silent instruction. So limited goals are not true. They are based on what we think is possible and there's no, there's no emotion in it. So there are a lot of teachers that say, you know, be specific. And, and this is good advice. The more precise you are, the better. However, it only holds true if that is what you really want or love. In our example above, a better goal would be, I choose to have more money than I can spend. And can you feel the, the emotional difference in this? So behind limitation sits beliefs like, I don't have what it takes to create what I desire, to be the fullest expression of myself and my love and, and love my life. Instead, I'll just go for a limited or small part of what I really want. Do you see? So go for what you truth, you know, go, go for your truth. Whatever substance it is, whatever is right, just go for it. Way more powerful. And the fourth one is other people's opinions or by consensus. Yeah. So consensus or others' opinions. Consensus or opinions. Now, you only create goals in this situation based on what others think or what they think about the result or what they think is possible. Typically, there's a specific group or person whose opinion we care about the most. This focus on what others think shows up as everyone thinks this is a good idea, so I will do it. Or if I achieve this, then others will think that. Here's an example. All my family said investing in property is a good idea. So I'll do that to make them proud. The challenge with this is the end result's not yours. So you don't really own it. Like there's no power in it. You're setting up to be others' liability if it doesn't work out. Do you see that too? And you are not trusting your own ability to know what's right for you. It's like it's very confusing to the superconscious if you're not going for what you want and really only purpose is to make others happy, right? The fifth way is control, right? This, and, and, and when we're, we're, it has to be a specific way, right? Has to be a specific way. These goals must show up in the exact way you want them and you're not open to the end result, right? And, Control is one of the ways you can really, really just get completely stopped. So usually control is in the time frame, or the circumstances or the people. Sometimes a person really stuck with control never gets what they desire because all their goals have to have other people meet certain conditions. Yeah, the other person doesn't, doesn't want to meet. So an example would be, I must have a loving relationship with, you know, a particular type of person and they must treat me in a specific way or I won't be happy. So there's a control or conditions is another, another way of putting it. So that there are conditions on, on the end result and how it shows up. There should be an N in there. <laughs> conditions. That looks terrible. <laughs> I have a condition that it must uh, be spelt properly, and I think it's a good one. Condition. So you know, notice the lack of power in that above statement. I must 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 have a loving relationship with person who looks like X Y Z, and they're going to treat me in a certain way, or I won't be happy. I can't, I can't put up with that. And, and there's a lack of power in that statement and there's a lack of free will. Now, if this person 
does not choose to behave in that way what like what if the person lies or cheats or what if they die or you know can, can you see that a better choice is i choose a loving relationship that makes me feel great yeah it's it's such a way better choice and it doesn't have any conditions or control yeah can you feel the freedom and the space in this compared to to the above the above choice and notice that it could be the same person filling the desire of the relationship however the creator who is defining this choice would have a very different energy with a slight change in the two above sentences so there's a big difference between i must have a marriage with robin and i choose a loving and i choose a loving relationship that makes me feel great the person creating this way is not actually after the end result. They are after controlling everything. Because if they really just wanted the end result, then they'd be happy in whatever way it turns up. Here's another example of conditions or control, which is, which is time. I will have lost 10 kilos in exactly five months' time. Or I will have $50,000 in exactly one year's time. So by imposing conditions, you try to control how you get your end results instead of allowing the true end result to manif manifest in the best way. This, can, this control, it just creates stress and knocks you out of the emotion of the end result and out of the possibilities that exist. And it makes things really hard. Like, it, it, does it really matter how the money shows up, right? Or, or, or you know that how long it takes to lose the weight like could it turn up faster than you want could you be open to creating the best upbringing for your children instead of having it be a certain way see many face this problem when building a business they're not open to many other ways to have financial freedom they just want it in the way they want it they're not after the end result they're after control now, the, the sixth way we make ineffective choices uh, is being indirect. So an indirect choice, we're actually going after the process. You see, you, your goals are vehicles you've created to get you somewhere else, right? Indirect. So you're taking the long route. So let me explain. So many try to plan their way to achieving everything. They would like to think they know exactly what they must do to get somewhere. However, many times um, get lost in what they think they must do and lose what they really want. The fallacy of the find your way movement has created this idea that we do something to get something else. And it just doesn't hold up in reality. And the problem is we lose our true end results in going the roundabout way. For it, you know, and it kind of looks like I'm creating blah, blah, so that I can have blah, blah. An example is I created a business to create a good life for my kids. But really the, the end result is you know, the true choice is I want to create a great life for my kids. So in this example, the person would just want a good life for their kids. So they start a business. It's possible that while they're building the business, they miss having time with their children. They started working late nights or early mornings. They were caught up in the process and they missed what they actually wanted. See, they missed the truth. If they just got into the end result of, of a great life for their children, maybe having a nine to five job would be better. Like who knows? However, by having the end result as the focus, the truth, they would not get caught in, in the process and it's the real goal. Many do this with education. They spend forever learning new techniques to finally be good at something only to realize they could have started doing what what they are learning and learned along the way to get the end result faster, you see. So all of those ways 
and there's a, I think there's another one. There's one more to go. So there's one more way of, of how we make ineffectual choices. And that is the, the choice by default, right? So the choice by default. So what do we mean by that? So this person doesn't really have goals and thinks they what they have is enough. So they say things like, I've got everything I desire now. I, I don't need anything else. Or, you know, I just take it as it comes. I don't need goals. Sitting at the default position of having no goals is not going to get you the life you really want because the universe doesn't work that way. All right? If you have no tension between here and, and what you would love, you have created a space of like a void and that void needs to be filled. If you were here to create more of what you'd love, you must have creative tension. Life is always moving, right? Life's an action sport. If you're not the active, powerful creator of what you desire, you'll be an element in others' ambitions. So you will be helping someone else achieve their goals and you won't get what you want. All right, you won't get what you want. So what we're going to do, I was thinking about unpacking and, and doing a RICO, but we actually, I'm going to do a different exercise and it's, it's going to help you connect with your super conscious. Okay. And it's a really, really cool exercise. Really, really cool. See, so your super conscious is always communicating with you. So let's do this small exercise so you can realize this communication, All right? So it is true that you actually have three brains on your physical body. There are aspects of your unconscious mind. They all send you messages. There's one in your heart, one in the gut and stomach and one in your head. They are all connected to the super conscious field. So let's do a quick exercise to become aware of this. Now, this is a closed eye exercise and you're going to really love it, actually. All right, and, and, and you're going to gain information from the body. So the, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to think of a moment where you made a mistake. So go back in your past and, and think of a moment where you made a mistake like and you got it wrong. All right, and the bigger the mistake, the better in this one, okay, because it's going to bring, bring through some, some feeling and emotion. So what I want, want you to do is just close your eyes and experience that moment again. Yeah, like, like a movie playing in your head. Just experience that moment again. That's it. Now, it might not be that pleasant, but um, I want you to experience that, that feeling. That's it. So just go in there, close your eyes, experience the moment again, just play it in your head. Just play it in your head. So where are you in your body? Where do you feel the emotion? And what kind of emotion is it? Are there colours associated to it? Just allow yourself to go into the moment and observe what is happening in your body. Just observe what's happening in your body as you're, as you're playing that, that moment where you got it wrong. You know, you made a big blunder or a mistake. And just, just what do you notice? What do you notice? Okay, great. So just come back to me and just write that down. Write that down. You know, you, you might feel a heavy feeling or you might feel contracted or, you know, your gut might tighten up or... And you might feel tight in the chest, whatever it was that you experienced, so just write it down. Just write it down. Okay, so the next part is now, now I want you to remember a time where you got it right, where you know you won and 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 everything worked out. Okay, so just go back in time. Might be recent, you know, you might have had a victory recently or it could be something way back or whatever it is, but just going back, remembering a time where you completely were winning, got it right, everything worked out. And I want you to close your eyes and experience this moment again. 
and you experience it again like a movie playing in your head where you got it right, you know, you won, everything worked out. Now, where in your body do you feel the emotion? And what kind of emotion is it? Are there colours associated to it? And just allow yourself to go into the moment and observe what is happening in your body. What do you notice? So where do you feel that emotion where you got it right? Are there any colours? Just, just observing what's happening in your body. What sort of emotion is it? And what do you notice? So opening your eyes and just writing that down. Now you, you, you might have felt light, you might have felt expanded, or you felt it in your heart. You know, you, you might have felt a rush through you, or you might have, may have had different colours or a particular colour. Just writing that down, I'll give you a moment. Now, let me ask you, what is different between the sensations in your body? Okay, from what's different between when you, when you were thinking of the, and playing over where you've made a mistake and got it wrong compared to when you got it right and you won and everything worked out, what's, what's the difference between the sensations in your body? See, I know for me, when I got it right, when I get it right, I feel like my heart's open and I'm expanding the chest. I can breathe easier. Um, but when I get it, when I got it wrong, you know, I feel heavy in the gut and I feel contracted. So what, what, what's the difference? What's the difference for you? Okay, so now we're going to do the process of communicating to the superconscious, and this was really, really cool. So I want you just to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. And we're going to just go into innocence and just and dropping into your heart. So just breathing in. I want you to really breathe into your heart like your heart your heart is your lungs and just breathe it into your heart. That's it. Just really opening up. Going into your heart and just really, really opening up. And now that you're there, now that you're there, I want you to remember, okay? I want you to remember in that previous exercise where you were able to get a body sensation or a read when a mistake was made or something was correct. So this is very similar to how you're going to get a yes and a no from the superconscious. So let's create a yes feeling in your body. So just remember the time where you made a correct choice or decision. And just imagine it. Notice what you feel and experience in your body. We're just going to become fluent with this feeling. And when you're really feeling it, please decide, just decide in your head, this will represent a yes. This will represent a yes. Now, once you've got that feeling, all right, you can just say this is a yes. Now we're going to do the same for a no. So remember a time you made an incorrect decision or a choice, you got it wrong, and I want you to imagine it and notice what you feel and experience in your body. Notice what you feel and experience in your body. 
And when you're really feeling it, please decide that this feeling will represent a no. That's it. So this one re represents a no. Okay, so just, just opening your eyes and coming back. So has everyone got a yes? Are you clear about the yes in your body and the feeling in your body and yeah? And have you also got a no? Okay, also, has everyone got a yes or a no? Just type a one in the chat box. Okay, great. Okay, great. So if you've got the yes and you go, you know, we're going to move on to the next, to the next part of this exercise. So what I want you to do now is just to close your eyes and just connect back into your heart. So just breathing in back into your heart. Just breathing in. Take some nice deep breaths and just, just letting go. Just letting go of needing to know. Letting go of needing to know. Let go of the moment and just count your breaths as you do 10 big, slow breaths. And just focusing on your heart and feeling grateful for the moment. And when you are done, you can open your eyes. So just letting go, just counting, that's all you're doing, just counting your 10 big breaths, focusing on your heart and not needing to know anything. Now I want you to connect, ask to connect to your super conscious. So just asking, Super conscious, are you there? And notice what you feel. Allow whatever is true to be there. Now we're going to create a container or a structure of the information we wish to receive. So closing your eyes closing your eyes and I want you just to command super conscious I want you to show me a yes or a no I want you to show me a yes or a no think of a decision you need to make close your eyes and ask super conscious is this the right decision. Notice how you feel. Was it a yes or a no? What did you get? Now take some practice. So remember back to the first exercise. All right, the first exercise is where we were getting a, a no yeah, where we've made a bad decision or a choice or, you know, where we got it wrong. Yeah, and, and that was where we were getting a no. And then the yes was where we'd imagine we've got it right and everything worked out. And we noticed where we felt that in our body. We had colours or a particular feeling. Now, take some practice. Take some practice. However, once you're able to get a clear yes or no from your superconscious, life actually becomes a whole lot easier. You can simply, simply connect to your superconscious and you can receive information from the field. And it's really fun. The key with this is allowing yourself to make it up and learning to trust what you get. It is an advanced process and you do not need to learn how to do it to be able to work with the superconscious field. 
having the ability to receive a yes or no is actually more than enough, okay? Listening to receive guidance is the highest form of communicating to the superconscious. Remember what you receive, it's never negative or literal. It's never ever negative or literal. So what I want you to do in your own time, you can practice. You can just practice. So remember the no feeling, right? You're just stepping in, closing your eyes. You think about the time where you got it wrong. You made a really bad decision or choice. Notice where you feel that or what you might see in your vision or we notice the feeling and emotion in your body. And that one's a no. And then you can close your eyes and remember a time where you got it right. You made the perfect choice or decision. Yeah. And you notice where you feel that in your body. And that one's a yes. Then you can go into your heart and just taking 10 beautiful big deep breaths and just sitting into your heart. And then you can ask, literally, ask the superconscious. Superconscious, are you there? You can literally ask superconscious, I want you to show me a yes or a no. And notice what you get. And then you can ask for a decision on something. You need to make a choice or a decision on something. And you can simply ask superconscious, is this the right decision? And you will get a feeling of the yes that you created or the no that you created. And it is so much fun. And you can start practicing, you can use it. It's never wrong. It is actually never, never, ever wrong. Because your superconscious is all knowing. And it's 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 there. It's the field of information that, that, that is there. It is the consciousness that knows all. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, it's been a massive session. Um, We've kept it to the hour. We got through a lot of stuff today. So I want you to start really thinking about outside of the four core choices, have a look at some of your true choices that, that you have made and, and have a look and, ma and make sure that they're not a negative vision. They're, they're not one of these ineffective choices that are you know, trying to resolve a negative belief or they're in reaction to something or that they're limited, or you're making choices based on what others think, or you're trying to control. Because it's really, really important. It's really important because otherwise you, you are literally choosing something that you're, you're never actually going to get. And the power lies elsewhere in an ineffective choice and not within you and your superconscious and your end result. So go, have a look, enjoy, play around with a yes or no with the super conscious. It is so much fun. It is so much fun. And uh, the next session, what we're going to do is we're going to get in and um, we're going to un unpack some internal conflict. We're going to un unpack internal conflict. Um, we're also going to get in and we're going to, we're going to, remove a charged emotion or or something that you've got you know you've got a trigger on you that you get triggered real easily and, and it's going to be a really fun process as well to to shift that and um if we've got time we're going to do a white out we're actually going to white out an emotion as well um which is a really really fun process to to recode your unconscious so First, you don't get triggered by stuff, um, yeah, that you'd ordinarily get triggered by, and secondly, to you know re release um, an internal conflict or a negative emotion that you just simply don't need anymore. You just simply don't need anymore. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Um, thank you so much. Uh, love you all. Remember, stay magnetic. Stay in the possibilities and stay in the end results, yeah? We're not problem solving. We're conscious 
creators and manifestors. Love you all. We'll see you next time. Nice one. Thanks.